let's take a moment and talk about the general lesson plan and its format that you'll be using throughout this course. You'll be using a form called the Step Lesson Plan Format, which looks like this. You will be downloading it and typing directly onto the form in the computer and then sending it electronically. The first three steps are very simple. Your name, the date, and the type of instruction that you'll be using. It's very important that you put the type of instruction that you will be teaching as you will be learning six different types of lesson plans. The first three will be teacher-centered because you will be providing the students with all of the information that they will need for each lesson. Under overview, you're going to list the subject. Is this an English or language arts lesson? Is this perhaps a mathematics lesson, science, social studies, health and physical education? Just give me the subject area. Now you are welcome to put science or you could put earth and space science, whatever is most comfortable for you. Grade level. Remember, it must be for third grade or higher. If you are unsure but want to teach at the elementary level, fourth grade is a wonderful option because it then can be adjusted to go a little lower or a little higher depending on what grade you will actually be teaching. For secondary education, just put the grade in the subject matter that you would like to be teaching. Your topic. What is the topic of this lesson? If it's in Earth and Space Science, what will you be covering? Perhaps it could be something such as weather. Then you want to list the goal for the unit that you're teaching and the rationale. Why are you teaching this? The goal, remember, does not have to be measurable. It could be something as simple as students will learn about the different types of weather that they experience in the state of Kansas. Then the rationale would be the why. Why do students need to learn that? Why is it important? And that's where you get to put that. Now for planning your lesson, we have objectives. Remember week one, we talked about writing specific measurable objectives that use an action verb. That's where they will go. Your assessment, how do you plan to assess this lesson? It does not always have to be a formal assessment. It does not necessarily have to be a quiz or a test or an essay. It could be something as simple as correctly completing the assigned assignment. It could be a worksheet. It could be drawing a picture of what they learned. It could be a thumbs up if you understand, a thumbs down if you don't. But you need to have some form of assessment. Standards. This is where you will actually copy and paste the actual standard from which you're teaching into your lesson plan. Then we get to materials. There's teacher's materials, what you need to teach the lesson, and student materials, what students need to participate in the lesson. Be very specific. If you're using a document camera, make sure that you list where that document camera is located. If students need crayons, is that something that you bring out from the craft closet or do they have them at their desk? Remember, we want a substitute to be able to walk in, pick up your plan, find the materials, and teach the lesson. We also have student technology and teacher technology. Will, be, will you be using an overhead? Will you be using a link or a video clip? Will you be using a document camera? Are there programs from which you got the information for your lesson? Is there a website that was helpful in preparing it? If any of that is true, is true, put that in your teacher technology section. If students are using computers, then list that. If you did not use or do not need technology, just put not needed. For differentiated instruction, this is where you think about how you're going to meet all the different learners' needs in your room. How will you address the kinesthetic learner and the musical learner? If you're a beginning student, it might be easier to think in terms of readiness levels. How will you address the lower readiness levels or those students that are a little slower to catch on? How will you address then the higher readiness level students, those that tend to finish up quicker and faster? How will you make sure that they all meet the standards and objectives for your lesson and yet be able to keep up and be able to extend the lesson? Sometimes you'll need to make culturally responsive adaptations. Perhaps you have a student from a country who's never seen an ocean. You may have to explain or do some background on what an ocean is. If they grew up in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, they may not have that background knowledge. 
So think about their culture, where they live, what country they come from, what types of housing or jobs their parents have to make sure that you give them the background knowledge that they need. Integration. This is where you talk about this one particular lesson and how it relates to everything else you're doing. If you are doing a lesson on weather, perhaps you will be doing at read aloud time the book called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Maybe in math class you'll be averaging the temperatures for the city of Sterling over the past six days. How does it integrate to the other subjects that you're teaching? Reading and writing strategies are more than just this is where they will read or this is where they will write. This is where you give them the actual strategies. How will they read and obtain the information you want from the reading? How will they correctly write? You may not have had those classes yet, so if you do not know those strategies yet, just put none needed. You also need to think about, in terms of your plan, difficulties that might occur. You can have difficulties in content. What parts of the material will be specifically tricky or hard to grasp? And how will you make adaptations for that? Or maybe the difficulties are in management, in classroom management, managing their behavior, or perhaps managing the giving out of materials. For a presentation lesson, how will you make sure they can all see and hear you? How will you make them stay in one position so that they can pay attention to you? What might the problems be and how do you plan to fix that? So we've talked about the overview and we've talked about planning. The next section will be the actual instruction. You need to list here the model of instruction again. Is it a presentation lesson? Is it a direct instruction? Is it a cooperative learning? So state very clearly what type of lesson plan it is. Then you will, for every lesson, clarify the aims and establish the set. What do you plan to teach? Why do you plan to teach it? How are you going to get your students ready for that? And we'll talk in more detail with each lesson type. You will outline your instructional activities with each phase of instruction clearly labeled and written out. Remember, if it's not written down, it wasn't done. Then every lesson needs a closure and oftentimes a follow-up assignment so the students can interrelate and interact with the material you've just given them. On the step format, you'll see a reflection form. That won't be necessary to complete for these lessons because you will not actually be teaching these. However, during your micro teaching or if you're in a classroom experience and you're teaching, then that is where you would reflect on how did the lesson go, what changes would you make. I hope that this makes it easier for you to understand the step lesson format.